Hey guys, if you haven't heard about Anchor by Spotify, it's simply the easiest way to make a podcast. Anchor by Spotify has everything you need all in one place. So let me explain. Now, Anchor has tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your own cell phone or your own computer. Now, I've been using and loving Anchor by Spotify for two years now. And don't forget that Anchor will go ahead and distribute your podcast on so many listening platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts and so many, many more. Now, I think it's simply everything you need to make your own podcast all in one place. And don't forget, Anchor is totally free. So why don't you go ahead and download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. I can't wait to hear all of your podcasts. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to all my listeners. Now, I hope you're all having a great day so far. I know I am. And if it's your first time finding me, thanks so much and welcome. Welcome to a brand new season, season seven. This is episode one. I thought, guess what? It's a new month as well, right? September has just started up and there's a change in the air up here for sure. So I thought it was a perfect time for me to start a new season as well. Today is Wednesday, September 7th, 2022. My name is Sonal Patel and this is the Paint the Medical Picture podcast series. Anyways, all right, you guys, now I've got a bunch to get into today. So I'm going to be diving into my compliance tips and my compliance recommendations today on the even newer, even fresher CPT codes on the boosters for COVID-19. And of course, there's that very, very newsworthy update I've been saving up on, right? There's that elephant in the room, so to speak. That's right. I'm talking about the 2023 ENM guideline revisions and CPT compressions, so to speak, right? That take effect on January 1st, 2023. That's right around the corner. And I go ahead and round out today's episode with a remarkable quote on purpose and impact by Golda Meir. If you checked me out on LinkedIn, you guys know I'm all about compliance and protecting our physicians and valued healthcare professionals when it comes to the business of medicine. I hope this week with me brings you enough to take back to your organizations, to want to dive in deeper, to use my tips and best practices to ensure success. I hope this podcast will help you boost the quality of documentation capture and improve coding accuracy as you help your providers paint the medical picture. If you like what you're hearing, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button now so you don't miss another episode. Please write in a review and kindly drop me a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to my podcast. I'd really love your support. And as always, a friendly disclaimer. Remember, I'm bringing you the news, current healthcare industry news, my compliance tips and recommendations based on my over 12 years of experience in front office, in back end, in coding, and in billing for multi-specialty physicians, in compliance, and in auditing for both ENM and surgical operative reports. These are my opinions alone and are not to be construed as legal advice. So, let's get into newsworthy. Now, the 2021 ENM guidelines for office and outpatient visits have taken effect as of January 1st, 2021. And providers have gained, in my opinion, a better understanding of capturing time and or medical decision making alongside the driving factor of medical necessity. However, as an auditor, I have still seen voluminous EMRs, meaning the burden to our providers when it comes to documentation capture is still evident to me for the most part. And as educators, we have a ways to go, again, in my opinion, in helping our providers craft better, improved EMR templates, or to navigate the various EMRs much better, to better suit, to better tailor these ENM guidelines as they are today, meaning those guidelines from 2021 and in 2023 not like the old 1995 and 1997 guidelines for the most part. 
Mind you, those 95 and 97 guidelines are useful and necessary for certain specialties and certain CPT codes only that will not follow those 2021 or 2023 ENM guidelines. Now, although the AMA came out with their 42-page PDF file on CPT evaluation and management, ENM code and guideline changes, with that document including CPT ENM changes that are effective again, of course, on January 1st, 2023. Medicare, however, has not come out with their final rule just yet. Their proposed rule came out on July 7th, 2022. So we just have to wait and see what is finalized, right? What is Medicare? What is CMS still going to tweak, still going to add, still going to contain slight differences than the AMAs? So let's be mindful that this is a warning. They may differ slightly from the AMA's 2023 ENM guidelines. But that's what we do here in the business of medicine. We have to cross-check everything and make sure we're following policies as they become effective. So anyways, what's the biggest change here, right? 2021 was all about the office and outpatient e guideline changes, right? Now, 2023 is all about the inpatient setting and applying either time or MDM to choose the appropriate CPT code. There's a very good summary from the AMA that I'm gonna highlight here. But remember, each and every section needs a deep dive of provider education before the effective date of change. Again, that's on January 1st of 2023. So what I mean by a deep dive is those 42 pages in that PDF really do outline the specifics of CPT code compressions and guideline changes, et cetera, et cetera. So according to whatever your provider specialty is, all of that needs a deep dive and further education for our providers. Now, let's go ahead and start with the first changes in inpatient and observation care services. So there's going to be, again, a deletion of observation CPT codes. Those are those CPT codes that we've been used to over all these years. They will be deleting CPT codes 99217 through 99220, as well as 99224 through 99226. And those have been merged into the existing hospital care CPT codes of 99221 through 99223, and then 99238 through 99239. So there's going to be those changes as well as 99221 through 99233. So those are those existing hospital care CPT codes that the observation CPT codes are going to be merged into. There's also editorial revisions to those CPT code descriptors to reflect the structure of total time on the date of the encounter or the level of medical decision-making, MDM, when selecting the code level. Then there's also going to be a retention of revised observation or inpatient care services, including those admission and discharge services, right, that those are our CPT codes 99234 through 99236. And again, those will also have a revision of guidelines. Then there's also going to be changes made to the consultations section. So the AMA discloses that the retention of the consultation codes with minor editorial revision to the code descriptors. So some minor changes there as well as there's going to be the deletion of the very confusing guidelines, including the definition of transfer of care. So over all of these years, our providers have been confused with those guidelines, right? So there's going to be a deletion of the definition of transfer of care. There's also going to be a deletion of the lowest level of office consultation and inpatient consultation. That inpatient consultation is 99251, and then the lowest level of office consultation will be deleted as well, 99241. So those consultation codes are going to align better with the four levels of MDM. Now let's move on to the emergency department services. Now the AMA is stating that they've maintained the existing principle that time cannot be used as a key criterion for code level selection. 
Editorial revisions to the code descriptors to reflect the code structure approved in the office visit revisions. So they'll make those editorial revisions there as well. Then they're going to be modifying the MDM levels to align with the office visits and maintain the unique MDM levels for each visit. So again, it's going to be based more on MDM rather than time again, right? Because they're maintaining that existing principle that time cannot be used as a key criterion for code level selection in the emergency room setting. Now the existing CPT code numbers are maintained. They're articulating that current practice that was not explicit in the CPT code set. So they may be using by those physicians and QHPs other than just the emergency department staff. So let's be mindful and pay attention to what those changes are going to be. And then critical care may be reported in addition to emergency department services for clinical change. So we'll have to look at those details greater as well for our providers. Then let's move on to nursing facility services. Now, under that subsection, the AMA is stating that there are going to be editorial revisions to the code descriptors to reflect the new standard ENM code structure. There will be a revision to nursing facility guidelines with new problem addressed definitions of multiple morbidities requiring intensive management. And those are to be considered at the higher level for initial nursing facility care. There's also going to be a deletion of code 99318, which is for the annual nursing facility assessment. Again, that will be deleted. This existing service will, will, however, be reported through the subsequent nursing facility care services. And those are the codes 99307 through 99310 or the Medicare G codes. So let's be mindful of what's going on there with those codes. And then they move on and state that not all initial care codes are the mandated comprehensive admission assessment and may be used by consultants. Now, they are also stating that we should be using subsequent visit codes when the principal physician's team member performs care before the required comprehensive assessment. So again, those sets of the nursing codes need a deeper dive so we understand those new changes much better. Then let's move on to the home and residence services. Now, the AMA states that there will be editorial revisions to the code descriptors to reflect the new standard ENM code structure, once again. Now, the domiciliary or rest home CPT codes of 99334 through 99340 were deleted and merged with the existing home visit CPT codes, right, of 99341 through 99350. And then they move on and state that the elimination of duplicate MDM level new patient code of 99343. So that's been eliminated as well because it's duplicative in the MDM structure. Then they move on to prolonged services. And this is what we need to wait on again for the Medicare final rule. So the AMA states that there's been a deletion of direct patient contact prolonged service codes, right? With our CPT codes 99354 through 99357. These services will now be reported through either the code created in 2021 for the office prolonged service code of 99417, right? Or there will be a new placeholder code, right? For the inpatient or observation or nursing facility service code settings of 993X0. So that's not a code yet, right? There's a placeholder of that X. So we should be waiting and keep in mind that there, that there may still be a new CPT code created, and that's for the placeholder 993X0. So the one that they created in 2021 of 99417 is also to be used for the home or residence prolonged services. Now, the creation of a new code, again, that 993X0, is to be analogous to the office visit prolonged services code, right? It's going to be equivalent to that 99417. Now, this new code is to be used with the inpatient, again, or the observation, again, or the nursing facility services, right? Only for that setting. Now, the retention of CPT code 99358 and 99359 for use on dates other than the date of 
any reported total time on the date of the encounter service. So we have to take a deeper dive into those codes as well to understand better what they're trying to change. Now, let's remember that the primary objectives of the CPT editorial panel revisions to all ENM guidelines, right? So both those 2021 and this flash forward, it's coming up real soon, January 1st, 2023 guidelines include the facts that the CPT editorial panel took seriously the charge to create revisions to the ENM code descriptors and guidelines and outlined four primary objectives to this important work. So let's remember they wanted to change these four things. They wanted to decrease the administrative burden of documentation and coding and align CPT and CMS wherever possible. So that was pretty amazing that that finally took effect, right, in 2021. Now, number two, they also wanted to decrease the need for audits through the addition and expansion of key definitions and guidelines, right? There have been so many definitions that we've all appreciated, right? Like chronic, for example, we finally got a definition of how long the, the, the word chronic means, right? How long is that process of chronic for a patient's condition? We finally got that definition in 2021. And then finally, third, to decrease the unnecessary documentation in the medical record that is not needed for patient care. Again, so that that voluminous um, documentation that we have been requiring of our physicians and our NPPs over all of these years are what created that administrative burden, right? So they also wanted to make that change take effect in 2021. And then finally, now fourth, the CPT editorial panel wanted to ensure that the payment for the ENM is resource-based and that there is no direct goal for payment redistribution between specialties. And now it's time for my best practice tips in trusty tip. So in today's compliance tip, I wanted to get into the AMA's latest update to the CPT coding manual. This update from August 31st of 2022 includes eight new codes for the bivalent COVID-19 vaccine booster doses from Moderna and Pfizer-BioNTech. Now, the updated boosters are adapted for the BA4 and BA5 Omicron subvariants and the original coronavirus strain in a single dose. Now, four of the eight CPT codes, CPT code 91312, 91313, 0124A and 0134A are effective for use immediately because the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, that's our FDA, they've authorized Moderna's new COVID-19 booster in individuals aged 18 years and older, as well as the Pfizer-BioNTech's new COVID-19 booster in patients ages 12 years and older. Now, Four CPT codes, 91314, 91315, 0144A, and 0154A will, will be effective for use when the FDA authorizes Moderna's new COVID-19 booster in patients ages 6 years through 11 years, as well as Pfizer-BioNTech's new COVID-19 booster in patients aged 5 years through 11 years. Now, let's be mindful. Again, effective immediately is the Moderna bivalent booster for 18-year-olds and older. So again, those CPT codes, there are two of them for the Moderna bivalent booster are CPT code 91313, which is defined as severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19 vaccine, mRNA, LNP, spike protein, bivalent, preservative-free, 0.5 milliliter dosage for intramuscular use. Now, in conjunction with that CPT code is the administration code, which is CPT code 0134A, which is defined as 
immunization administration by intramuscular injection of severe acute respiratory syndrome coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19 vaccine, mRNA, LNMP, spike protein, bivalent, preservative-free, 0.5 milliliter dosage, booster dose. And let's move on to those two CPT codes that are for use effective immediately is for the Pfizer BioNTech bivalent booster. And those are for 12-year-olds and older. Now, that first CPT code is 91312, which is defined as severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19 vaccine, mRNA, LNP, bivalent spike protein, preservative-free, 0.3 milliliter dosage, trisucrose formulation for intramuscular use. And again, that second CPT code that is in conjunction with the first is for the administration. And that CPT code is 0124A. And that's defined as immunization administration by intramuscular injection of severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, SARS-CoV-2, coronavirus disease, COVID-19 vaccine, mRNA, LNP, bivalent spike protein, preservative-free, 0.3 milliliter dosage, trisucrose formulation, booster dose. Now, not effective yet, not effective for immediate use, is that Moderna bivalent booster, right, for those patients aged 6 years through 11 years. Now, we already have CPT codes for those as well, but again, be mindful, they're not effective just yet. And that CPT code is 91314. And then again, that also has another CPT code that goes along with it, right, for the administration. And that is CPT code 0144A. And those both have definitions as well. And they will be outlined in your brand new shiny CPT coding books that come out to you hopefully in October. I hope to receive mine in October as well. And then let's be mindful Finally, even though that Pfizer BioNTech booster for ages five years through 11 years is not yet approved by the FDA, CPT has already published, will be publishing those CPT codes that are reflective of that new Pfizer booster for those patients aged five years through 11 years. So for the Pfizer booster, For those patients, that CPT code is going to be 91315, and then its coordinating administration code is CPT code 0154A, and those both have definitions as well. And you can find those new CPT codes. They will be in the new 2023 CPT coding manual. But again, take note, right? Print pages from the AMA, their website with all of these off-cycle coding updates. This pandemic has proven to keep all of us in this little niche of medical coding, billing, auditing, and compliance on our toes year after year. And finally, I focus season seven spark on purpose and impact. I want this seventh season spark to be filled with our world's thought leaders, writers, artists, philosophers, everyone who inspires the need for purpose and impact in all that we strive to do. So in this week's inspiring quote in Spark is from the former female Israeli prime minister of the years 1969 through 1974, Golda Meir. Make the most of yourself by fanning the tiny inner sparks of possibility into flames of achievement. Absolutely true, right? I think this is an amazing quote that reminds us that we all have sparks within us. I think this quote reminds us that we have the ability to nurture and grow these sparks. This quote inspires us to look deeper into our own sparks. They symbolize our purpose. I think this quote reminds us that our own lives are filled with purpose. I think this quote inspires all of us 
to leave our own legacy of impact behind. I am happy Golda Meir's spark still burns brightly in all of us today. So that wraps up today's episode. And as always, I appreciate you all diving into today with me. If you want more information from me, please go ahead and follow me on LinkedIn. I'll leave links to everything in the show notes below. All right, you guys, in my final fun note today, I hope you all made time for yourselves or your communities this past Labor Day holiday weekend. We had our very own delayed fireworks show up here. Remember, we had that suburban 4th of July parade shooting that devastated my community. But we did have a delayed fireworks show on Saturday. So anyways, you guys, I hope you all made time for some self-reflection and giving back in some way or another. Please have an amazing week ahead and an outstanding start to your September. Keep carving out some time for yourselves to prevent full-blown stress and burnout. And of course, please continue staying safe and healthy during this PHE. Thank you so much for listening in on today's episode, and I hope every week with me brings you closer to helping your providers paint a masterpiece. See you next Wednesday.